Hello, everybody. We're here today to talk about all the awesome opportunities we have at CUNY uh, in student life. We are all either former um, students or current students, graduates of different CUNY campuses, and we're excited to share our experience with you today. Uh, my name is Chris Bonacore. I'm a graduate of Queens College and a graduate of Baruch College. Hello, my name is Nakia. I'm a graduate of Nega Edwards College and Queens College. And, you know, I'm just going to discuss a little bit about my experience in dance and in the choir and how it impacted my student life at CUNY. I am Corey Provost, a Tucson graduate of Brooklyn College. It was so good I had to go back twice. <laughs> Hi, my name is Haven. I'm a senior at York College, and I look forward about telling you about my student life experience. Hi, everyone. My name is Giuseppe, and I'm a senior at Brooklyn College, and I look forward to giving you as much information as I possibly can. So CUNY, uh, 19 different colleges across the city of New York um, has thousands of different clubs and organizations and ways that you can participate to make your life and your academic um, studying at CUNY even better. Going to college is often about what you can get involved in, and I know for me personally, being involved at Queens College in particular was what helped me to really um, succeed academically. So we have a lot of different things. I, I encourage you to please ask us some questions. We'll do our best to address them, and if we can't, we'll certainly get back to you later. Um, also visit the website, cuny.edu slash undergrad admissions. Um, you can explore the different studi, uh, student life opportunities. Um, so Giuseppe, I know you have a lot of experience at Brooklyn with um, athletics. Can you tell, tell us what it's like to well, yeah, Chris, of course. I mean, as, um, as a student going into a large school not knowing anybody, um, like you mentioned, if you don't get, in, get involved in some type of activity, uh, you, uh, you might end up missing out. And um, personally, I'm a big sports buff. I like sports a lot. So what I did, what, whatever I did came naturally. I just got involved in athletics, um, what came easy for me to talk about, mm -hmm. easy for me to relate to people about. So uh, in particular, all of my favorite sports being baseball, basketball, um, football, soccer. Um, I got involved with all of the teams at Brooklyn College. Now, CUNY is a division, is a division three, has division three sports. Mm -hmm. So we don't offer athletic scholarships. Okay. However, we have all the activities that a division one or division two school has. So we have pre-game presentations, post-game presentations, in-game presentations, and then we have an assortment of clubs as well. So for example, me being a, a big Mets fan, uh, my kids go into the baseball club at Brooklyn College and at the same time be surrounded by Mets fans, occasionally get my chops busted by Yankee fans. <laughs> um, what did you do in the, in, the, in the baseball club? Well, actually it's pretty cool because each club, like football, basketball, baseball, not only has um, like group meetings where we discuss um, going to see the games um, all together, but we also have like fantasy drafts. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, get together and watch the games on campus or off campus. Um, Brooklyn's about... 35 minutes away from the city, and we have two express trains that go into the city from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So um, if we if we don't want to stay on campus, we could always go into the city. And most of us um, live in the neighborhood, so we could always go to somebody's house, somebody's apartment, and watch the game, um, which is actually pretty cool. You make a lot of friends that way, you meet a lot of people that way, and you'd be surprised how many Met fans there are. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> in, in, in Brooklyn in particular. <laughs> I mean, there aren't many of us left. We haven't had much to cheer about, but you know, it's nice to be able to relate. Yeah, to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I know at Queens, for example, the the fitness center was was awesome. We have an Olympic sized pool. Uh, we were able to make use of the gym and go whenever there was very flexible hours. Um, tons of different exercise uh, bikes and ellipticals, treadmills, sort all sorts of weight training. Um, it was a great way to stay in shape in college. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is that they, you can use the facilities at all the campuses. Mm. So I know that there's an Olympic sized pool at York, awesome. right? Yeah. So that's and the cool. Brooklyn. Yeah, there yeah. you yeah. go. It sounds like all the CUNY campuses and have Olympic sized pools. Besides the pool, um, New York actually got new training machines. Mm -hmm. um, so the, all the machines are brand new, and they also have a separate new training room. So all, for those who just are interested in weight lifting, cool. it's a cool thing that they have. Um, that's awesome. So I, I know we mentioned earlier, like, CUNY being in New York really makes New York our, our campus. I know when I was attending Queens, um, I could go anywhere in the city and take advantage of some of the opportunities. So one of you guys was telling me about some kind of pass, right, that you can have at, as a CUNY student. You can get 
um, into the museums and different um, oh, yeah, the, the shows. Oh, yeah, the Studio 51 Lifetime. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a couple of our... There's, mm-hmm. there's a couple of museums, like the Newton Museum, mm-hmm. um, the MoMA, um, which will do botanical gardens, the zoos, and it's actually the complete listing is on the CUNY website if you just search for cultural passport. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the entries are either free or at a huge discount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Christina, you mentioned earlier about choir. Yes, um, I was in the choir. <laughs> I was in the choir in Mega Everest College and. We did a lot of um, singing around the mm-hmm. community in Brooklyn, and we got um, the opportunity to perform at one of the CUNY galas, which um, had That's a lot of, it's like an event that they have for um, the, <laughs> it's like an event that they have for the um, got presidents and mm-hmm. um, of the schools and the different campuses, and we had a chance to perform to them. So it's like, I mean, it's, it's a great experience mm-hmm. to, you know, to be involved in, to have the arts, and it really did, you know, play a big part in my life at Mega Everest. How did you guys make friends at Mega Everest? Because for me, I, I was pretty fortunate. I had um, kind of started getting involved on a campus when I was going to high school. Mm-hmm. So once I got to college, I kind of already knew which clubs I wanted to be a part of, how I wanted to be involved, and I just, I mean, I was very open to it. I think that's one of the good things should be is kind of just open to making friends and then once you get there just really just jump right in mm-hmm. like just like it's the pool jump right in <laughs> <laughs> i mean for me I, I came from a big high school my high school had about 2500 students um most high schools don't in new york in particular don't have those large numbers mm-hmm. um and when i got to brooklyn it went from 2500 to close to 20,000. Mm-hmm. so now i was I, I was used to i was used to you know everybody um in, if not in my, everybody in my year knew each other. We all connected in one way or another, and now you had, you know, you were in class where you had students your age, but you also had students older than you, you mm-hmm. had students younger than you, um, you had students who had different needs um, than you did. Mm-hmm. So just being, what, what really helped me to make friends was just being very conscious, being very respectful, uh, respectful of my surroundings. Um, getting to know a person before judging them, mm-hmm. um, also, um, going to I, I had gone to a private school, so everybody wore the same uniform, yeah. which was something that going to public school you have to get used to now. I had to get used to that too. That, that was definitely <laughs> definitely a, a trip, <laughs> going from wearing the same uniform every day to having to choose your own clothes. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and that was actually personally, um, it helped me be more conscious about my surroundings. It helped me appreciate what I had helped me appreciate my peers and and gave me a better understanding of actually listening to their story, where they were coming from. And that helped me make a lot of, a lot of great friends. You'd be surprised how how much you can learn about a person by just talking to them for a few minutes. Um, Also, I know that at York, I know that in any of the um, other CUNY colleges, they also have club fairs. Mm. So usually within the beginning of the semesters, um, the the clubs will actually put tables out and they'll have brochures and they'll try to recruit students, yeah. Yeah, I remember actually at Queens, the uh, Student Life Building had at least once a semester, all yeah. the clubs and organizations Pretty came together and, and kind of had a, had a booth so you can go around mm-hmm. and see what's available. Right. Um, there was also like club um, hours, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, different hours you could just get involved and nobody has class. Yeah. Were you in the <coughs> clubs at Queens? I was in the peer counseling um, club, so it, it was... Not, a, not necessarily a club, but it gave us counseling skills, and we would um, be peer mentors to other students, and we could help them with academics, um, personal issues, and that's actually where I made a lot of my friends in college, because to be honest with you guys and with, with everyone in the room and out there watching, I mean, it's, it's really hard sometimes if you just go to class and then go home. If you're not going to get involved and, and really become part of the campus and get involved in a club or, or an organization, it really can be difficult to meet people. And to this day, my best friends still are from peer counseling, and I still have dinner with the professor and her and her husband. Um, I made some great connections through that program, and it really helped me to grow into who I am today. Well, being a part of the dance program, although it wasn't a club, I was a a part of a group of people that share the same interests as me, and I feel like that's how it is at all of our and all the clubs at our school. (coughs) It's because we share this common interest. This is why we have this club, and it's like that helps you make friends because it's like this person likes what I like. This person, you know, can hang with me, and you know, so I, you know, that's something that I recommend. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. I think that I mean for me also, I 
took college or I looked at college as an opportunity to learn things that I didn't know anything about. So some of the clubs that I got involved with was like the Islamic Society because I didn't know anything about um, that. I didn't know anything about the Islamic Society, mm-hmm. for instance. So I just wanted to get more information. So that's why I met Gary Van and checked him out with them. I also got involved in um, things like the Italian American Society mm-hmm. and, and things like that, the Irish clubs, because mm-hmm. I just wanted to learn more about different cultures. And were they always like very open to having having new new members? Yeah, come in they were awesome. And the great thing about well, I remember the great thing about going to college was that at all the events they usually have food. So mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get to, it's really just it's like your own cultural passport right on the campus. Yeah. You get to um, sample different food from all everywhere. It's awesome. Speaking of food, <laughs> the food at Queens College is delicious. They cater to all nationalities: kosher, yeah. American food, Asian food. They have it all, you name it. They got it. Junk food, <laughs> ice cream. There's a restaurant across the street called Gino's. Their pizza is like the best for me, I guess, in Queens. You know, Brooklyn pizza is really good. But Gino's pizza is good. And then you have... Oh, wild card. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Brooklyn College is the best. I mean, to be honest with you, the best halal food in the city is by one of our campuses, Brooklyn 36th. Mm-hmm. Uh, halal guys, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, I took it one step further. We actually... we I mean... I love to eat. I love food. Mm-hmm. But one of the first the first things that I did once I was I got to Brooklyn College and I heard about this particular club, I had to go and join. We have what's called the Chicken Cutlet Club at Brooklyn College, for those of you who like to eat. <laughs> um, what we do essentially is every week we would pay a fee, which is about $10, $10 mm-hmm. a week. And one of the students, usually usually the uh, head of the, of the club, would go out to one of the delis or one of the chicken spots in Brooklyn, <laughs> in, around, in the area and sometimes out of the area, and go and purchase sandwiches, chicken colored sandwiches, for those of us who had, uh, who had paid the fee. And it was, just, it was just a great experience. It was just awesome knowing that you didn't have to go out to buy lunch. You knew it was coming to yeah. you. <laughs> and you had, actually, you had an hour to eat it because it was yeah. always during club hours. Yeah. And club hours, as you mentioned earlier, we had that one hour where there were no classes. Everybody was out on the quad. Um, it, it was, it was, it was, it's a great experience because, you know, I still do it now. Did so. you, did you find some, some really great places that you frequent? Oh, I mean, th- I mean, I, they're going to get advertising because <laughs> 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 I, still, I still go there now, um, in, in Brooklyn and it's called Dykers Park Bagels. They mm-hmm. have what's called the Chicken Ridiculous. <laughs> and Pretty ridiculous. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, j- just, just to give you an idea, it's fried chicken, um, in, um, oil and vinegar, <laughs> fresh mozzarella, lettuce, tomato, bacon, ranch dressing on an everything bagel. Wow. Ooh. Sounds delicious. I mean, that, that's so cool. I, I know like one of the things that really surprised me when I was learning about student life at Queens, and I think it's like this at most of the campuses, if there's a club that you want to start, you can start it if it doesn't exist already. So I'm assuming one day somebody got up and said, I love chicken cutlets. That's and it. And yeah. this way, yeah, made a chicken simple. cutlet club. So there's, there's just so many different opportunities for you to find that niche group of, of people who share your interests and, and get involved. Um, we actually have a question. Um, somebody wants to know if you can study abroad at CUNY. Um, have any of you guys studied abroad? I, I did a little not. bit. Okay. Um, my experience was, I, I had one regret of not doing it in undergrad. I think it's an experience that everyone should definitely jump at if mm-hmm. they can. I've had friends that have studied at, in China for a semester, in Ghana. Uh, those are the two major programs at our school. Uh, in my graduate program, I got an opportunity to do a little bit of it, mm-hmm. but we had a special class that we spent um, 10 days in another country, and it was really a comparative politics class, mm-hmm. and we wanted to go to Brazil for a week. Oh, so wow. it was really, really awesome. Yeah. I mean, Brazil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> stayed on the beach. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think that's a uh, experience that you don't want to miss. If you have the opportunity to study abroad, definitely do it. And the great thing about CUNY is that uh, every campus has this program where they offer different countries and different classes that you can learn. Mm-hmm. But let's say you want to take, uh, let's say Brooklyn College doesn't have a trip to or a study abroad program going to Paris, and that's where you want to go or to the United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. If another college has it, you can take it at that campus mm-hmm. and you can still do it. So it's like having the opportunity of yeah. 19 colleges. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere, everywhere in the world. world. Any and everywhere, pretty much. Yeah, I also study, ab- I wish I studied abroad. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the stories I hear from my friends at Queens oh. who went, I mean, 
I have a friend who did uh, a winter in Czech Republic, a semester in Australia, another summer session in Germany. Damn. And she, to this day, is still like a world traveler. And I'm, I'm always jealous to hear of her, her uh, trips <laughs> that she goes to the rest of the world. All I have to say is you can do water like while you're in college, do it because it's much cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get help in, uh, in financing. Yes, it's not a lot of pocket. You're paying CUNY tuition. Yeah, yeah. Right. So tuition. Yeah. You're only paying for your ticket yeah. to get there and get back. Yeah. Yeah. But they also have um, travel grants and scholarships for sports. So some yeah. students pay, like literally, it's much cheaper mm. once you're in college mm-hmm. going forward. Yeah. You try to do it with your help. So, yeah. And even once you're there, I had a, I, I didn't do it personally. Um, mm. But I did have a very close friend of mine who did. And she went to she went to Rome. Mm. And then she was there for a semester. And through, through, uh, through Brooklyn College, every weekend they would set up inexpensive trips to different cities so she was in Europe for I believe 12 weekends and she went wow. to nine different cities so she had the opportunity wow. to visit Barcelona uh, Madrid she went to London she went to Paris every weekend the college would organ would, would uh, present inexpensive trips whether by bus or uh, or plane to um, to one of the major cities and she could spend you know her Friday she would leave Friday morning and come back Sunday night and then go to class on Monday morning awesome yeah so just a uh, jump on that a little bit more the student clubs also do a lot of trips and um, going places like at Brooklyn College we have a debate team they have competed at debates all across the United States they went to Germany um, so that's another opportunity for students that want to experience something outside of just New York mm-hmm. to get outside of there just getting really involved in one of the clubs and um, just being able to travel and really open your eyes to like many different places and they don't even have to go that far because um, <coughs> for those of you who don't know Brooklyn now has a basketball team, the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, I bleed orange and blue. I'm a diehard Knicks fan, but I, that doesn't mean I didn't take advantage of what uh, the Nets offered to Brooklyn College because we do have um, a particular link. Um, essentially, with all those that were part of the basketball club, received reduced admission to all uh, to all all uh, 41 net games. And three times this year, we had the bus about 65. Brooklyn, we were 65. The first 65 to go re- received free admission. We were able to go to the net game for free. Uh, we were picked up and dropped off from Brooklyn College, awesome. and um, we also had the opportunity to give questions to some of the players, and we, we received some paraphernalia, mm-hmm. which I never utilize because I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just good to know that um, CUNY is looked at in a certain way, even by some of the bigger investors in, uh, in the city. So guys, we actually have another question. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, she asks, how is the housing on campus? I know I had just graduated Queens when the summit went up, uh, but I have been back a bunch of times, and and I got to say that having the dorm on campus really does add a new element to the campus. If you haven't already done some visits to some of our CUNY campuses, I really encourage it. (coughs) Queens is a big, beautiful campus, and having the summit right there on the campus for students to really live there gives it a whole new feel um, and different than it was before. The CUNY... Many of them are primarily commuter campuses, but Queens now has housing. Uh, the College of Staten Island just opened up a brand new dorm. Yeah, uh, Jay, Hunter yep. City. Um, and even if there are no on-campus housing, so for example, Baruch and Hunter are in uh, the middle of Manhattan. Uh, so we work with educational housing services to help students find places to live where other students from other uh, institutions from around the city all kind of get together and there's a place where they can they can live and make New York really your campus. And then I found, I actually found my apartment um, from, from, through Brooklyn College. Mm-hmm. We have um, a large bulletin board um, by the library where students can post notices, post information. <coughs> it, it, it doesn't just have housing, it also has club invites, it has book, uh, individual selling books. But I just happened to come across um, um, a young lady who had just graduated. She was moving, so her landlord had asked her to, if she had anybody. Mm-hmm. She put the notice up on the Brooklyn College bulletin board, called in, and, and I found a nice apartment. Yeah. 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 But the good thing about our housing is you don't have to be outside of the state to live there. You mm-hmm. can actually be from within the city yep. and have housing there. And even though I, w- I didn't take advantage of it, I felt like if you did and you were from the city, it was like you have the best of both worlds of being away from home and still being home at the same time. So that's the um, plus to the housing if you want to get that real college yeah. <laughs> life. And, then, and the other thing, like many many of the dorms are, are very new, um, so it's not, I mean, I've stayed in some some dorms that are very dated, um, and and I'm sure you guys have had some, <laughs> some experience. They have private bathrooms. Yeah. The dorms have private bathrooms, and um, 
if someone gets intimidated by oh Kaji Staten Island has dorms, but Kaji Staten Island is you know in Staten Island. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about you know, with the express bus, it's like 25. I visited friends who stay there. It's mm-hmm. about 25 minutes, you know, door to door from yeah. from the city to to Staten Island. Mm-hmm. So you actually <coughs> have that full campus experience. Mm-hmm. However, you have the uh, the the opportunity to visit a major city like New York. And you can also um, dorm at. You could be a student at Queens, for example, yes. and dorm somewhere at another CUNY campus yes. if, if you so choose. Um, well, since we were we were all commuters, I mean, I, I commuted, but there also was, for, for the commuters out there, there's commuter lounges, there's places on campus where people can get together and hang out um, during classes so you don't go to and fro home all the time. You're just kind of finding pool tables, ping pong tables, we mentioned the athletic facilities, there's plenty of things that you can do uh, to, s- to stay involved on campus. Those two videos we made about Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at Brooklyn College, we have the student center, and on like the first floor, there's a pool table, they have Xbox, PlayStation, um, big screen TVs where you can just watch whatever, just make sure you can relax when you're not in class. And a cafeteria. And a cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> well, cafeteria. Um, so, what about um, student government? Is that something that happens at all the campuses? Yes. Yeah. You talking about us? Oh yeah. 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 Most of. I mean, I was very, very involved with student government. That's really how I got to learn a lot about the different clubs on the campus. Mm-hmm. Because student government kind of like oversees student life in some degree, mm-hmm. and you just exposed to every single kind of club that's on a campus, and it was really an awesome experience. I think it's a really good way for people to get involved on a campus in a different way. Um, you get put in a position where you get to interact with students, administrators, professors, mm-hmm. all three worlds, and try and navigate <coughs> that. And um, what I, I think networking is one of the biggest parts of their college experience. So being in all three of those worlds will give you a good leg up when you're exiting, um, exiting college. So what, what, what kind of ways would, were you able to get involved with uh, yeah. administrators? Mm-hmm. And um, with me, well, personally, I was the president of student government for the, um, when I was in graduate school okay. mm-hmm. at Brooklyn College. So with that, part of my duties were really to appoint students, because all the colleges have different committees, or mm-hmm. for maybe in college, you can be college president or something like that, or developing a new academic program, and students serve on these committees. So it's really getting some hands-on experience on how um, board meetings work in the real world. And that I was able to you know, appoint certain students to certain committees. I also sat on certain committees with the college president, um, and that was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, same, like you mentioned, interacting with professors and stuff, and even just going to your classes. On a, professors are usually very open about having office hours and kind of getting involved with them. I mean, another thing that... Um, I was involved in in college, and I have a bunch of friends that were also as undergraduate research, um, getting involved in different labs. I mean, depending on the type of major you're going to go into, um, psychology, for example, you, you're going to need to go beyond a bachelor's degree. And one of the ways to really succeed and, and get into a gr- good graduate program or PhD program is getting involved in, in some undergraduate research. Um, I actually, to this day, I still work with a with a teenager who has autism because of my professor who I had in my senior year at Queens. Um, he liked my work and passed off my resume to the child's mother, and it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> since, since I've been working with him. So I was able to kind of get involved and meet people around the campus that way. Um, so, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you were talking about professors, um, about how your professor Yeah, and actually, I was gonna, um, switch gears a little bit. <coughs> I also have some friends who are involved in fraternities and sororities. I know that um, when I started attending CUNY, I didn't necessarily think of it as a place where fraternities and sororities are existing um, in like what you would see in the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not like what you see in the movies, but we do have fraternities <laughs> and sororities where, where they do a lot of good things on campus. Um, any of you have any experience with that? Um, I have. I... I mean, I, I was kind of coming from the same viewpoint you were when mm-hmm. I thought about CUNY. I didn't really think about fraternities and sororities, especially when I was going to school. But I think now fraternities and sororities are on just about every one of our campuses mm-hmm. and have fundamentally changed student life because they're very active. They're trying to recruit students. And they also understand that it's not like in other states where they only represent, like, the, you know, they have the traditional 
rent houses and things like that. Mm-hmm. Right? But, you know, we still have fun here. Mm-hmm. We still have our events, um, the mixers, the, the fraternities and sororities. And it, it's just another, again, if you don't want to get a guest involved in one of these clubs, you could you have the option of joining a fraternity or a sorority um, on one of the campuses. And it has been also, uh, I'm part of a fraternity, so it's really been an amazing experience. And again, it goes back into something I mentioned earlier, which was the networking mm-hmm. and being able to develop a good network so that when you leave college, you can find a job. Right. <laughs> and also, um, with the fraternity and sororities, you don't actually have to be a part of the fraternity and sorority to attend any of their events or any of their mixers. I mean, I'm, I'm friends with Brooklyn College on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, and I'm also friends with their fraternity and sororities on Facebook, and I follow them on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they, um, they do send out invitations to Brooklyn College students and CUNY students who are allowed to bring a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they do fundraisers and fundraisers and all that fun stuff that, uh, that you do see on TV. Um, and like I said, you do contribute um, <coughs> within, within the community as well, because you do a lot of community service. And um, like, like I said, u- utilizing social media to, to expand your network mm-hmm. can, can do you um, a lot of good. Um, which can also help you. I mean, Brooklyn College also has like each each specific division can be found on on Facebook or Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like uh, our Magnus Center, which is our career service, our career development center, mm-hmm. where I spend a lot of time in. Yep. Um, they do they do actually reach out to you and set up meetings and, uh, and appointments to meet with representatives. Um, as a matter of fact, last week um, I met with the senior vice president of public relations for New York Knicks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She came on campus, she did a small presentation to the members of the Magnus Center. So as long as you sign up to the, to the um, career development, um, you sign up to the Career Development Center, you're able to receive this type of information. Yep. And yeah, to, to this day, my resume is still in the format that the Queen's Career Services helped me put it in. Um, I kind of had no idea of like what to do. I mean, you're, you're in college and you're like, all right, now now what's next? And how do, how do I write down all these experiences I have on, on a piece of paper? <laughs> to make somebody want to hire me. Um, but they really do help you and sit with you. And I, I had a few sessions, really a one-on-one session with somebody who helped me put that together. Um, and they all are available. And I say this to, to friends and people all the time that things at, are always available for you at the CUNY campuses. So I mean, at Queens, like I, I had to go look for it. I knew if it was there and I could go make an appointment and somebody was there and willing to help me. Um, and there are all these different services. I mean, another, for example, um, counseling. I went to, I took advantage of professional counseling for two years, you know, which, guess what? You know, when you're, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, when you're an adult, that's expensive. Yeah. And it may or may not be covered by health insurance. Um, it's, it's stuff that you can take advantage of while you're in college. Um, I still speak to my counselor to this day. And it's, it was a really beneficial experience for me, it kept me, kept me on the right track. Give you a friend for life, too. Yep. Yeah. And aside from the, um, you know, resume help and the career services, they also actually help you with your um, internships. They help you uh, find information on where to volunteer. And for those students who get lost, sometimes they don't know what majors they want to take, they also help you with that. They mm-hmm. give you an aptitude test, and they, oh, yeah, they yeah. find you yeah, for the majors, <laughs> yeah. I uh, was I, I was told by that test I should be a cop. <laughs> I, was told, I was told by that test that I should be an arts, and that's actually what I yeah. <laughs> study. <There you> go. <laughs> but depending on your major, what you study, I know that the majority of our colleges that they, you do have the experience to be exposed to whatever it is that you're studying. Yeah. So if you're in nursing, they you have internships at hospitals, at the different clinics. If you're a teacher, you're a student teacher, maybe at a daycare yeah. or at a junior high school, high school. So you do have hands-on experience Mm -hmm. um, as far as the career path you're on at our individual college. I mean, I'm studying finance and investments at Brooklyn College, and two semesters ago I interned at Merrill Lynch Mm -hmm. for the first Mm -hmm. semester, and I'm in the process of putting in an application to intern at uh, Goldman Sachs for the summer. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it'll set me up in a way where once I graduate, (laughs) 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 hopefully I have some type of uh, income. And then how do you find these things? Is it posted at the career services? Or no, I was actually, there, I, I mean, it just, so, it, it just so happened to work this way where um, at one of the events that the Career Development Center um, hosted, the director of the Career Development Center happened to be there with her daughter. Mm-hmm. 
and her daughter wouldn't stop crying. <laughs> she wouldn't stop crying. She was trying to present, um, and her daughter actually took a liking to me. I picked her up, and she stopped crying. <laughs> and afterwards, she approached me. She oh, thanked me. It was a baby. Yeah, it was a baby. <laughs> 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 the baby saw me. Like, why are you picking somebody up? Like, oh, it was a baby. She was, she was like two years old. She wouldn't stop crying. <laughs> So I just made a couple funny faces, and going back to what um, what Corey had said about networking and just yeah. being friendly, mm -hmm. and like how you said about putting yourself out there, present, introducing yourself, mm -hmm. and you know the baby was crying. I'm good with kids. I picked <laughs> her up. She stopped crying, and afterwards she thanked me. She okay. asked me if I needed any help looking, you know, doing some doing uh, some research. Mm -hmm. Showed me a couple of websites mm -hmm. where I could put my resume out there. She did a mock interview with me. Uh, wow. wow. Yeah. Nice. So um, that's how I was able to find the. Um, Merrill Lynch um, internship, and it just so happened that the gentleman who offered me the position was a Brooklyn College graduate. Oh. So the Career yeah. Development Center mm -hmm. helps you with that too. Um, yeah. She helps us find former alums, how to search for yeah. former alums, mm -hmm. all the little tricks. Because we, are, I mean, we always want to, we always want to choose something that we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. So that I'm, I'm assuming that the gentleman that did offer me the position uh, for the internship. Knowing that he was from Brooklyn College, was knowing what he was going to get. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, for yeah. Sure. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know that at York, um, you, well, you didn't just walk into the office and ask for some questions, mm -hmm. um, but also, once you have the school email, they'll also start to send out emails um, to the students to tell them what uh, volunteer jobs are available, mm -hmm. internships, if they're paid, if they're not paid. So. And we're in New York City. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's, there's so Everything many opportunities around New York City. <laughs> but also, sometimes the career center, well, they, the career services center, they also put on these job fairs every mm -hmm. semester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they organize it for the college students. But I know CUNY also does a really big one mm -hmm. every once a year yeah. um, at the Civic Center. So yeah. that was really awesome. Where, you know, just come in with your resume, dress for, dress for success. Dress, <laughs> dress for impress, dress for success. And, you know, you get an opportunity to meet with hundreds of yeah. potential employers. And just, and just um, going going back to the career services center, one of the best one of the best piece of advice I ever got was that you only you only have one chance at a first impression. Mm -hmm. So the simple fact that, as as Corey said, you know, dress to impress, uh, your tone of voice, these are um, your, what your resume looks like, yeah. um, how you present yourself. Those are all things that I learned, and I'm, you know, Corey, Corey, and I went to the same school that we both learned <coughs> from from the Magnuson from the Career Development Center, and um, it can help you not only in, in regards to your career, but it could also help you in regards to your social life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you never want to start off on the wrong foot with anybody, especially in a, in a place where you don't know anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's you know some advice that I received from them and that I'm hopefully going to be able to pass on to you. And even if you're not ready for the real world and working, there are jobs available on the campus there. So you, oh, there's, yeah. there's office jobs, and you said you had a career counseling yeah. position. So there are a lot of opportunities where you can start your experience. Mm -hmm. Tutoring, there's a lot of opportunities on the campuses where you can just put yourself out there and yeah. gain the experience because sometimes mm -hmm. that's what jobs are looking for, experiences, and not so much just the academics. So it's like they both work hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah, um, I actually, I used to work on campus. I used to work at the clerk office, which is basically um, an intensive English course for CUNY students. Mm. Mm -hmm. How'd you How'd you get that? Um, I applied. I actually went to the CUNY <laughs> And then they're like, all right, you're a student here, you can work it here. Works. Yeah, it, was just, it went hand in hand. Nice. You know, I didn't have to travel far to go to classes or go to work, it was mm -hmm. just right on campus. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, me too also. I was um, being the, the peer counseling program, it was three semesters of just being a student in the program, and then I internally applied to be um, a paid person working for the program, and I worked very closely with the director. Um, and it, it was a really rewarding experience. Um, I, let me tell you a funny story. Yeah, so please. <laughs> so my, 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 for like my, my first two semesters, I was a tour guide. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, being a tour guide just gave me a greater appreciation of just how, how diverse our campus is. Mm -hmm. um, so BC, for example, right? We have 20,000 students. We're, we're split 60-40, females to males. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so... so, so um, we're located in the heart of Brooklyn on Bedford Avenue, mm -hmm. and um, like I said, we're very, uh, very high, very, very diverse um, <coughs> sorry. 
community group where we have, we're divided, I believe, 28% African American, we're 14% um, Hebrew, I think 12% um, Asian, and then the majority is all... Is all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> And the only reason why I know that is because, like I said, I was a tour guide, so I used to get these questions all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, it's also a place where you're never going to feel alone. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and what we mentioned earlier about you know being able to relate to different types of people and finding people that have the same common interests mm -hmm. as you do as well, that was very that that is in all of our camps is very very big. And you mentioned uh, twenty thousand students. I mean, you really are getting a diverse group Public. of twenty thousand right. yeah. students. I mean, I I came from a small Catholic high school, and before that I went to a small Catholic grammar school, <laughs> so <laughs> kind of being thrown, and then coming to Queens College is my first yeah. real experience in a, in a larger um, public school, but even though there are a lot of students, like you said, it never really feels that big. I have some friends who went to other universities and were in two, three hundred person lecture halls. I think I probably had one class, maybe like Psych 101 or something, yeah. where it was like a hundred something students. Yeah, I, was a little small class. I don't even think it was that big at yours. Yeah, not even yeah. for the lecture halls. Yeah, and then had the had ones who are already taking classes for your major, the group gets smaller really and small. And small. I used to be in yeah. a class of ten sometimes. Yeah. 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 Nobody really likes class of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Our professor was, I had, I had one professor for business law. She's, she, she, till today, on a first name basis with all of us. Mm. And she, she's just amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But to touch on the diversity thing again, you know, it's kind of like what I was talking about before. When I first started and the kind of clubs that I was just encountered, like the Islamic Society and the Irish Club, and it, it, that speaks to the diversity of the campus mm. when you have these cultural clubs that have a representation from all these different cultures and you still find out so much um, about them. They had the Chinese culture club and all these other things. So it was really, really cool. <laughs> that was that was an awkward, awkward pause. pause. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to have awkward pauses. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's, that, that, I mean, that, that, that silence is comparable to when um, in that Brooklyn, two of our teams, um, our, our women's basketball team, has won the final two years in a row. And our last game, the championship game, um, our one, one of one of my close friends, Justine O'Callaghan, she won the game on two last second free throws. So that silence could be comparable to the <laughs> silence that there was at the gym when she was, when she was out of the line. But um, what was awesome was the final wasn't at Brooklyn College. It was hosted, it was housed at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. So I actually got to shoot free throws at MSG. Um, mm -hmm. Because all, you know, Brooklyn College students, if you got there with the team earlier, and me, of course, being the nerd that I am, I got there earlier. <laughs> I got there earlier with them. Um, I was actually the scorekeeper for that game, so I got to shoot a couple free throws. Mm -hmm. And yes, they did beat me one on one. I'm surprised. <laughs> so, um, right. Battle of Lexi two video. Um, I don't know. <laughs> 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 That's another yeah, so <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll take it. Do you know that we actually have comedy clubs too? Speaking of uh, speaking of funny stuff, um, where we do go to, we actually have them on campus, and we have some stand-up comedians that are are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we actually have clubs for that. We have they actually give lessons too, and uh, that that's pretty cool. Also, we go to different campuses to to have those mm -hmm. like comedy club nights. Yeah, one of the cool things about being involved in different clubs is that some of the clubs they'll do events off campus. So when we say you have New York City as your campus, you really, really do. Um, being part of student government, when I was there, you know, we do a concert in Hammerstein Bowling, mm -hmm. which is just mm -hmm. phenomenal. 3,000 uh, people. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been to a couple of events there. Yeah, it's been huge. And I know Hunter College is a real good party school. <laughs> 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 they always have a really, um, really nice concert. They've done concerts all at Webster Hall. Mm -hmm. They're on their campus. They do them. Because um, we have theaters on most yeah. of our campuses. Right. They do yeah. events yeah. there also. So again, just those off-campus events are really awesome, too. Speaking of Hammerstein Baldwin, before they broke up, I went to go see uh, Swedish House Mafia there. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a trip. That was mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, just, just flashing. I, I felt I felt as part of, like, uh, I felt like as, as a privileged member. All I had to do was flash my book of college ID. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're good to go. Go, ahead. go. So I was getting looked at, like, you know, who's this guy? Yeah, I mean, CUNY, like, we're, we've spoken about it a lot, but it really is a part of New York City. I know even when Hurricane Sandy hit, um, a lot of the campuses acted as shelters. Mm -hmm. um, York. York. Yep. Uh, Queens. 
is worse. So it, it's really a part of the city. It's there for the city. We have partnerships with so many different organizations in the city. Right. Uh, we're very well respected. I mean, I, I think pe yeah. people. They have a third. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what people don't realize, our campuses are big. Like yeah. They're yeah. huge campuses. There's a nice picture of Brooklyn right back there, you guys. Oh, <laughs> you want to talk or should I tell them? You tell them. Uh, tell them about the so, Louis Vuitton. So between... <laughs> we have a Louis Vuitton. We have a Louis Vuitton. <laughs> but between the years of 1999 and 2013, where we're currently going, we've appeared on the top 10 most beautiful campuses um, rated by the Princeton Review. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, we actually came in as number one. Mm -hmm. So last year we came That's in same. at number four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We came in at number four. And what people don't know about CUNY is we have a private beach. I mean, I'm a transfer student. I started off at Kingsborough. I started off at one of our community colleges mm -hmm. before transferring into Brooklyn. So I kind of do represent Kingsborough as well. Mm -hmm. ABCC by the bay. Um, <laughs> but yes, we do have a private beach um, that students are allowed to utilize. And they're allowed to bring themselves plus two guests onto campus mm -hmm. to utilize the beach. So during the summer, if it gets a little crowded on Coney Island or Manhattan Beach or Sheepshead Bay, just get out of there. Just go over to Kingsborough. Get CUNY ID. CUNY ID, you're good to go. And allegedly, Queens College is on the highest point in Queens. And if you're on campus and right in the middle, you see a spectacular view of the Manhattan skyline. Yeah, like I know that. From, that is true. <laughs> from west to east, right? Yeah. It's really tower. nice. Um, how, was, how was the transfer process for you? Was it now, relatively simple? How long did you spend at Kingsborough? I spent six months on Kingsborough. Oh, oh, now, wow. the reason why I was able to get out to uh, to transfer very quickly and to make my transition very smoothly was I asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. and I got involved with the transfer office. Okay. Um, what I did, first of all, I, I knew that there were two ways to transfer. Either you needed to have the credits, the 24 mm -hmm. college credits, yeah. or um, if you didn't have the 24 college credits, you, needed, uh, you also needed to take a math class and English yeah. class. So I knew I had to take those right off the bat. So those were the first questions I asked, what do, what do I need to do to mm -hmm. transfer? So they assigned me a transfer counselor. Mm -hmm. She made sure that I was taking my classes on time. And at the same time, I also got in touch with one of the transfer counselors at Brooklyn College, who I still talk to today. He's a very good friend of mine. I do fantasy football with him. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so Steven, I did. Um, and he was able to guide me just to keep in touch with me, uh, make sure I got my documents in in time. And I didn't even have to get my documents in because CUNY to CUNY, they request transcripts electronically. Yeah. So all I had to do was make sure I filled out my transfer application. So it's pretty easy, and the pretty transfer office it, was helpful. It went, it went pretty smoothly. I, I, I could not complain, and I had a, uh, a different experience as opposed to some of my friends, mainly because I went in and I asked. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, 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 I was on top of my, uh, of my work. I would make sure that all of my information was in. Again, I mean, being a part of being in college is time management, taking responsibility and advocating for yourself, and, and all these services are there for you. And introducing yourself, yeah. introducing yourself goes a long way because mm -hmm. these people are seeing hundreds of faces every day. Mm -hmm. And if you take a moment to, add, to, 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 to uh, introduce yourself and ask them what their name is and how their day was, it can go a long way. Yeah. Well, for me, true. transferring from Mega Everest to um, Queens College, I think the hugest difference for me was the campus itself because Mega Everest is actually in the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. if you would have to like sort people's houses and all <laughs> these things just to get to one building to the next, unlike Queens College where all the buildings are on you know one area. Yeah. So that was the only difference for me, just being able to get from one class to the other more faster yeah. at Queens College than I did at Mega Everest. But um, Queens College was more of a suburban feel mm -hmm. versus um, Mega Everest being that rural type life mm -hmm. and you know everything, the hustle and bustle, like the same thing at Baruch mm -hmm. and Hunter, yeah. is right dead smack in the city. And you, then you have the different experiences at Staten Island, Queens College, Queens College, where, you know, Brooklyn. the yeah. Brooklyn, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it's, it's all, it's all CUNY, but each yeah. campus has its own, adds its own uniqueness. Right, it really does. and every really campus does. is different. All right, so it looks like our time is about up. Um, <laughs> this has been awesome. No, I think yeah, yeah, this so. has been a lot of, a lot of good information shared. <laughs> and, 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 and here's another thing, being a CUNY student, I had the chance to meet you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> True, it's been the biggest pleasure of my life. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we look forward to seeing you at CUNY. <laughs>